Donald Trump has been sworn in as the 45th President of the United States and he's begun work right away fulfilling his campaign promises. I'm Femi O.K. And I'm Malika Bilal. Today, part two of our special town hall on the new Trump administration with immigrants to the U.S. We'll discuss the issues and where our guests stand. You don't want to miss it. From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. America first. Every decision on trade, on taxes, on immigration, on foreign affairs will be made to benefit American workers and American families. We must protect our borders from the ravages of other countries making our products, stealing our companies, and destroying our jobs. We're happy to have Saba Ahmed back in our stream town hall. She's president of the Republican Muslim Coalition. She emigrated to the United States from Pakistan. Jeannie Nguyen is president of the Voice of Vietnamese Americans. She came to the United States as a refugee from Vietnam. Also with us on set, Loida George is an immigration lawyer. Her family, originally from Mozambique, immigrated to the United States from France. Jesse Singh is founder of Sikh Americans for Trump. He immigrated to the U.S. from India. Mayra Campos Segura and her husband, Anthony Segura. Mayra immigrated to the U.S. from Mexico and Anthony is an American <coughs> citizen. And AJ and his daughter, Sana Siddiqui. AJ emigrated to the U.S. from Pakistan and Sana was born in the U.S. Welcome back, town hall guests. Lively town hall guests who are all in good voice. Good to see you again. I am going to say one word to Malika. Mm. Healthcare. Oh, that's a good word. Where are you going to take us? I'm, oh, I'm going to take man. you here first. Oh, man, you heard it already. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to take you here first. This is Twitter. This is Deepak. He says, seeing tra his track record, Trump as president should be good entertainment globally. Maybe not for Americans, So. I think many Americans would disagree. Uh, no, it's not entertainment because one of the things on their minds, the biggest issue for many people, is health care, as Femi mentioned. Now, President Trump, he's talked about it. He's stood pretty firm on his intent to repeal the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare. And in his first interview after his election with the American network CBS on their program 60 Minutes, he said this. We're going to repeal it and replace it. And we're not going to have like a two-day period and we're not going to have a, a two-year period where there's nothing. It will be repealed and replaced and we'll know. And it'll be great health care for much less money. So we will repeal it. That's what he said. And here's what some members of our community thought about it. We heard from two who sent us a video comment. Have a listen. I believe that choosing Seema Verma to assist with health care reform is very smart to address the issue of rising medical expenses. Her approach is to first remove the free health care. That's what I understand. We've already seen initial work to repeal the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare and that impact that it may have on women's access to birth control and preventative health care. That risk is only going to be heightened for immigrants who are at risk of detainment, deportation, or loss of rights altogether. We are entering a period of uncertainty as both immigrants and non-immigrants could lose their health insurance or see their health care options become much more expensive. So, Sana, you heard there one person's positive, one not so positive, and the other is concerned on what this will mean for women. What about you? Uh, health care is super personal because my sister is a disabled uh, American and, you know, um, with, with repealing uh, um, Obamacare and with the the pick for the Department of Health and Human Services who believes in rolling back Medicaid, which my sister depends on. Um, and on top of that, the preventive uh, care services that um, the Affordable Care Act covers for so many Americans and being someone that's going to enter the sphere of public health, I, I can't even imagine a world where we don't have those preventive care services being paid for for so many Americans and for an America that is just um, kind of uh, uh, burdened with chronic, uh, chronic illness and non-communicable diseases. Let me just show you Lloyd's Instagram page here. There's a little joke on it. I don't think it's that big a joke, though. The Republican alternative to Obamacare will see you now. We have the nurse and the patients, and deep, deep, deep down here, the grim reaper waiting at the door. <laughs> Lloyd, what is the subtext to this cartoon? 
Well, several things. Mm. The whole idea of repealing without having uh, some sort of mechanism ready to go, I think is scary. Now, I am not against the idea of fixing and fine-tuning ACA. No one is saying that it was a perfect machine. ACA, the Affordable Care Act, is often been known as Obamacare. Absolutely. ACA, Obamacare, yes. And so no one is saying it was a perfect machine, and in fact, um, I think it's a beautiful thing if Congress comes together to improve it, but to just simply take it away without a, a fully functioning me mechanism to take its place is scary. I myself um, am insured under the ACA. Now, I'm not saying that there are not any issues, and I'm sure my esteemed colleagues on this panel will gladly chime in on all the issues that AC Obamacare has. But again, I don't know that the answer is repealing it, especially if there's nothing in place. It's not just repealing. If you listen and pay attention to what the president is saying is that he's going to repeal and replace it at the same time. So the so, point so is we have to hold You don't have to worry about that it's said. going to be repealed and there will not be nothing left there. But what have you heard of that he's going to replace it with? Yeah, I think the if legislation you, if, in Congress that is going on is talking about replacing it with much better. Uh, what Obamacare focused on was health insurance. We need health care reform, which is not just insurance reform. We need like a good health care for all Americans. And I think Trump is targeting that. So Trump campaigned with a lot of promises and we need to hold him accountable. He said he won't touch Social Security, he won't cut Medicaid, Medicare, and he won't uh, take away the precondition in the ACA. We need to make sure that he does what he, would, he has promised, especially with the replaced part of the affordable care. So until they have a replaced program, they should not repeal it. They're that, not going to do want. that. I and, think and there will be a transition through the repeal and the replacement, and we will see the Congress the legislation that passes ultimately will make health care better for I all would Americans. feel so much comfortable with any of what you were saying if there was some sort of tangible replacement plan that well, we could actually... Well, of course there will be. Why, why, he's not replacing it, um, I mean, re repealing it today. Why don't you give him some time? Today's the first day in office. Oh, what were they voting uh, on two days ago? ago. You, you, yeah. you, they Congress. were voting on the law to repeal it and replace it. Exactly. It's not going to happen tomorrow well, or next week. why would you week. repeal they, something with nothing in place? Because it's useless. Place. It's not working. No. People's, uh, it's working for me. me and I have insurance. That's right. you, but it's, it's not working for me. It's working it's, for it's, 20 it's, million it's, Americans. And it's not working for the rest of them. And he's not repealing it. He's replacing it so it can work better. So we uh, need there are to so make many sure businesses that, that have been hit hard with this, and there are so many and people who can't afford Obamacare anymore. Do it. it worked for the, the first year, but for the second year, sure the our senators and representatives listen. be accountable for what they promised us. Let it's very listen. important. Let me just listen in to Myra. Myra, what were you saying? I don't think that they're going to. It's not necessarily re, re, uh, replace it. I think that they need to renew completely because the health system here is a big business. A lot of people can't get any service. You know, I work with community that need to get for foundations some kind of help for get attention. Grants. And we know because my husband know we need to go out the country for get health service cheaper, fast and with quality, something that we need here urgently. And the big business is in the health insurance because the money that go to the health insurance never go to the health system, go to the other companies, but never go to the hospitals, to the doctors, never go for get better attention. So we need to think about and ask for a better health system completely, not just and renew. We with Obamacare or without Obamacare, I think that we need to renew completely. And that's what the focus no, I, is I going think to be, disagree. the health, and health reform, right. not just the health insurance. That is scary to have uh, Mr. Price being uh, uh, nominated for HHS secretary, because he's yeah. the one who already, before he being nominated, had already uh, collaborated with the, the drug company and another medical company yes. to buy their stocks and then affect exactly. the, the legislation to make sure yeah. that um, he get benefit or the, the company gets benefit from it. It's conflicts of interest. So we need yes. our senators and our representatives to watch out for it. And we, the citizen, need to make our voice heard. I think it's important that we, you call your senators, you call your representatives, and make sure they voice the concern for you. And they do not pass the hearings for those with concerns that, that 
So, uh, Jeannie, I'm going to share some concerns from our online community. Uh, these are just a couple of people. And, and, you know, we only have 30 minutes for this conversation and so many topics to cover. So we just co covered health care. Immigration, though, is another big issue that people want to talk about. So this is Carla. She says Trump's regime plans regime, those are her words, to bring in an era of increased deportations, harsh enforcement, criminalization, and hatred. Another person, this is Raimundo, who says uh, Trump has based his policy on excluding, on building walls, and separating families. Tough times ahead for immigrants in the U.S. Anthony, my You're right? Incorrect. You're incorrect. <laughs> I, I thought you might say Trump's that. Trump's talking about legal immigration. The you people know, that are worried are the illegal people that are coming in. They can build a wall in all the border, and that I'm going to stop that the people come to the United States. You know, the narcos, if they put a wall for 10 meters, they gonna have well uh, uh, stairs for 11. So that's gonna stop the immigration. Well, Especially he's talking about legalized the immigration, and I think that he's talked about criminalization of people who have entered the country illegally or are right. committing crimes. How that going to happen? Oh, there are people. The price is too expensive. There is already many criminal aliens in this country without any legal status, and he's talking about those who are committed crimes to be deported immediately. And, and I think and that's that. under Obama, we've seen record deportation. So you can't just put that on uh, on a Trump administration. We we'll, we are going to see a legalized, uh, a strong, secure border, and we're going to see immigration that monitors every single person that's coming into the country and going out. Mr. Trump's organization's been known to to use or uh, abuse the uh, the illegal undocumented uh, immigrants for his own uh, building and things. That's, that's and he abuse. supports and many abuse. people. No, no, right he employs many people it's, from it's, all over the world. I don't that think he used them and not No, I think he has. So while we're talking about building a wall, let's see what President Trump said back in December when he was president-elect. Oh, we're going to build the wall. People are saying, do you think Trump's going to build the wall? Trust me, we're going to build the wall. And by the way, people are going to come through that wall. We're going to have doors in that wall but they're going to come through legally. And people are going to come through on worker permits to work the fields. We're going to have people, a lot of people are going to come through, but it's going to be done through a legal process. But one thing that's not going to come through is drugs. The drugs are going to stop. Anthony, in four years' time, will there be a war between Mexico and the United States? Well, I hope there is, actually. Um, we need to stop the thing. And the thing that he mentioned last was about the illegal drugs. Um, I happened to be on CNN a few months ago and talk about this very subject, and I said northern New Mexico has one of the higher, highest rates of drug over, uh, overdoses from heroin in the nation. And if it's going to take a while to do it, then so be it. But I like what he said. People are going to come to this country legally. There's going to be guest visas, work visas, and that's what we need. We need legal immigration, and he's going to do it. So I know that you like what he said, but there are some in our community who are afraid because of what he said. I want to share a video comment from one of those people. This is Amaha speaking to us from New York. Have a listen. As an African immigrant in America, uh, and as someone who works with African immigrants, is that uh, the president-elect has endorsed racial profiling, stop and frisk, and deporting so-called criminal aliens. Uh, that means that as uh, our community is going around their daily lives just trying to get to work, get to school, uh, take care of their families, they're more likely to be stopped and frisked uh, just because of the color of their skin or, or the way they look, and then more likely to find themselves in immigration and deportation proceedings. So we, our community really needs to stand up and say that's not, uh, that's not the reason that we came to America, that's not the America that we know. So as that was playing, both Loida, uh, you were nodding your head. Jeannie, you were, you were nodding your head. Loida, what were you thinking? So I'm an immigration attorney. So the folks that are most impacted by the rhetoric and the scary unknowns of what this administration may or may not bring are my client base. And from, the, from before he was elected and definitely since, my phone and my email has been buzzing. And it's with people very scared and legitimately so. No one is against legal immigration. No one is. Democrats and Republicans. So when I'm hearing the constant plug, he's, he's for legal immigration, I'm like, who is saying 
open the borders and let everybody run yeah. through. Nobody's yeah. saying that. Nobody's saying but that. at the same time, you're talking about 11 million undocumented individuals who did not all enter without inspection, which is fancy language with who did not all run across the border. There are individuals that came here on all, a myriad of visas, whether they're student visas, employment-based visas, and sometimes family-based visas, but they lost their status along the way, and they're not the criminal element. And we're talking about protecting those individuals. And the rhetoric that Trump is spouting does not speak to that. In fact, DACA, which is under executive action through Obama, protects individuals that have been vetted, who have come out, identified themselves, registered, who now have work permits. They don't have a legal pathway to a green card. So this is not amnesty by any means, shape, or form. But these are people who now are afraid that the very system that allowed them to come forward, these are children who came to the United States by no fault of their own. They are not criminals. And now, under the threat of Trump, that very right that they um, subscribe to by registering into the system may be taken away. And Nothing. Well, the 800,000 people registered under DACA, they admitted like, af there is going to be comprehensive immigration reform under when? Trump. When? That, that's the job of Congress, and Congress will be working but with in the Trump the interim, administration. But in the interim, if that executive action is taken away, there what will is be the no solution. New, President they, Trump so recently I agree, on Fox I agree News with interview that, but we had need to said. Have a path to citizenship. Okay, and we need, again Trump. need to President call Trump the President Trump in a recent Fox interview had that. said that he would come with a plan which will have compassion and heart in it. I'm tired that, of hearing that, about that, plans. Where is the... No, he wants some chance. Exactly. This, this is his plan. first day. This, this is his first day. day. Yeah. first day in office. You, yeah. go, you, go, yeah. you, you yeah. want to hang yeah. in the first to, day? To be fair, regardless of your political persuasion, it is the first week. You're absolutely right. But what he talks about is taking away without any idea of what he's replacing yes. or coming with. If you You're listen to him, right. he does what say. He that's he not what he's saying. All he says is I've got a big plan. I've got a big plan. You have a big plan. You're not going to listen to his good side. Let me speak to Anthony. Hold talk a minute. Anthony, go ahead. He speaks from both sides of his mouth anyway. AJ, you're going to make a lot of money because the lawyer's gonna contact you and you're an accountant, you're gonna make a lot of money with this. But I am said, already making a lot of money on that. Well, good, you're gonna make a lot more. But the thing is, wow. Donald Trump has said it's gonna be on a case-by-case -case basis. He's gonna look at everybody. He's not oh, gonna he's gonna, everybody where does he get the money to administratively review 11 million people case-by-case? Without any, type of, without any type of standard in place. I mean, now you're sounding a little delusional. Well, like Donald Trump? Maybe? No. You're, no. It's, it's a liberal fantasy that he's just going to go out and throw everybody out of the country. Hey. It's not going to happen. He doesn't have okay. the experience of reality, so we give him some time. Why, why doesn't we, he have the experience the, of reality? Citizen, he he's married to an immigrant. He is married to an immigrant. He knows what, he what said immigration and what means. He he's so that he he knew nothing. Nothing. Because he tweets differently from what he said. So, yes, I, I, I want to make sense. all the money for come here. It's right, different guess. with the people that try to come for this country when you try to do it legally and you can afford it. All right, guess I'm going to move things on well, a little I, bit. I, as, as most of us are immigrants in this conversation, I, I can hear the, the passion and the intensity. Malika, where do you want to take us next? Um, another group that might be concerned. It, it really, we're just, we're just kind of rolling them off here, unfortunately. This is Carla, who says, Trump's regime is also a threat to my LGBTQ friends, including those who are undocu-queer, so merging these two worlds, undocumented immigrants, and also those who are in the LGBTQ community. We also got a video comment from someone who's just is concerned. This is Luis, and here's what he told us. As a gay immigrant, I feel like there are really dark times that are about to come for our community, for the LGBT community, and especially the immigrant LGBT community. The thing that I'm most afraid about is that we won't have an ally in the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice who will stand up for us and defend us against hate and discrimination that will for sure come from people who mask their hate behind religious beliefs. I believe that, however, as it happened during the AIDS crisis, we will stand up as a community and we will eventually prevail. So he says we will eventually prevail, but Saba, uh, do you think he has a reason to be afraid? 
I don't think so. I think <laughs> Trump has said that it is settled law, and he's going to respect the Supreme Court's decision when it comes to um, LGBT rights and also uh, when it comes to pro uh, pro um, choice um, uh, things. But I think what we are going to see is a return of conservative family values. Which is why you became a Republican exactly. in the first place. Right. And I think that is good to see with the Republicans bringing back conservative family Can values. Can spell that out? Because that's often used as a phrase and people don't actually unpack it means what that means. Traditional what does that mean? marriages, traditional yeah. family values, one man, one woman, children, so the support of this family structure, which is the foundation of society. When you break that down, a lot of liberal ideas Yes, they may fly in the media, but I think as a society, we don't Does need to be promoting them. Does it concern you at them. all that Trump has five children by several Three different women? Is, I, is, is that a is that I think he, values? I think it's, I, I he really has a beautiful family. I think you know. Yes, he has uh, had. He may have had uh, <laughs> disagreements, and uh, you know. But that is the Republican double moral. No, no, that no. That is the Republican no, no, no. double moral. I come from a Muslim they background. You, they allow four wives. Oh, okay, so that's not even an issue for. Like, you know what? Yes. But you I, just I, said the traditional family values. The traditional values family one values, one values one include me, men and women raising children. He has been a great provider for his five kids, and I, I see a good family. I'm not man. No, and, and he is doing a great job for his family, and we're really looking forward to having him uh, run the country. And the next four years so, is going to be great for the family values and the conservative movement. I, 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 I think we need to come back. I think we need to come back to the constitution the, uh, because in our constitution, LGBT and all different people should be treated equally. We already have, and equal we also protection. have to talk about the coming Supreme Court nominee. And she just talked about conservative. Uh, um, Conservative, conservative uh, potential. So it's very worrisome for many that the next Supreme many Court Supreme judge. Court judges being nominated and by I hope Trump. It's going to so be we need to, as citizens, we need to make our voice heard. And the core is hold on to our constitution. And the president, if he's violating the constitution, he should be impeached. Mara, well, he's not. What were you adding? I could hear you there in the background. Go ahead. We talk about conservative values. I was talking about the double moral that sometimes the Republicans show. You know, some of them they are against the abortion, but they are pro death penalty. So for me, that is a double moral, and like that in all the. I don't think too. we need to be having millions of babies aborted every year. I think pro-life movement is very strong, and I'm glad to see the conservative pro-life movement if come back to life. You should talk about and, gun control, too. And why, why do they don't use the money that they use for about the abortion? Why they don't use in education? We don't need I think that to that have, is better. We don't need to take away life. I think life is sacred, and it should be respected. And uh, you know, a woman's choice does not allow you to terminate pregnancies up to the ninth. Uh, month, which is w it's what is not that I am pro. It's not that I am pro-abortion, but I think that if I am pro-life, I am pro-life in all the times, mm -hmm. not just when it's uh, an issue like the abortion. Well, what, I'm, what I'm hearing is that the next few years, the, the, the discussion, yeah. the political discussion is going to be robust, not just amongst politicians, but amongst citizens and immigrants and people who are living in America. I'm curious about how your feeling right now, your mood Great. right now. Oh, fabulous. We feel oh. very uncertain. Well, the fabulous, fear, uncertain. Lloyda, how's your mood right now? I think what's beautiful about what's happening is it's an, it's an awakening a dormant base, which I dare say is the majority of Americans. Because like we were saying in the previous episode, Trump did not win by a landslide. He does not have a mandate. And the majority of Americans did not vote because they were complacent. And I think what's happening now is folks are realizing, whoa, this dem democratic system, if we don't plug into it, it will eat us alive. Let me just sample the mood before I have to wrap up the show in less than one minute's time. Jesse, your mood right now? My, my mood is very optimistic, but I'm also very disappointed Sana, at, uh, at my AJ, opponents. How, how are you feeling right now? Well, um, you know what? I'm hesitant, but I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful because, yes, pre uh, President Trump is our president, but we also have people like Tammy Duckworth, Kam Kamala Harris. Mm. We have our own Ilhan Omar. We have people that are ready to, to protect the rights that make this country beautiful. So wow. I am I'm very, hopeful. I, I am, I am uh, hopeful. I think things, the, uh, I have a, a lot of confidence in the American system. It will fix it. 
Right. No Trump can destroy the American system. It will fix it all by itself. So, so and Hall, remember, we have Keith Ellison. Over. Town Hall guests, we've had two shows to talk about how you feel about the upcoming Trump presidency. It's been fascinating tuning into you. Hopefully, we'll be able to bring you all back, maybe the first 100 days, get us all back again to see how the presidency is going. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Thanks.